Hey, thanks everyone uh, for coming for my session. It's the uh, last session for the day. I hope I can keep you engaged with my presentation. Okay. Um, so today we'll discuss uh, tapping into the strengths of uh, hybrid cloud. Um, over the last few years, I think this hybrid cloud is something that is uh, that is gaining momentum, right? So um, we had a public cloud and private cloud, and now. It's a hybrid cloud. Hybrid cloud is a combination of two or more clouds. And um, let's take a look at like what, um, okay. Okay, 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 clicker. Oh, there you go. Okay, so in, in this um, session, we will take a look at like what the introduction to hybrid clouds. Um, and we'll also take a look at like what the enterprise IT composition, and then we will see, you know, what are the key enablers for the hybrid cloud, right? Um, and then we at Triller Data, how we battle multiple clouds during our testing and development and uh, deployment phase. Um, so let's start, let's start with the introduction to hybrid cloud. Um, so how many of you are thinking or deploying hybrid clouds in your enterprise? Okay. So do you have any future plans in the two, two years down the line? Does your IT looking uh, leveraging public cloud some form or shape. Okay, so you know, based on some stats um, that uh, we picked, right? Um, the hybrid cloud, right? Gartner says um, ITs will leverage uh, the hybrid cloud in fo some form or shape. Uh, almost like 50% is going to be like hybrid cloud, right? And uh, other um, um, research. You know, it varies like from 40% to all the way to 80%, the composition varies. But the key point here is in some form or shape, um, the hybrid clouds are, are gaining momentum and uh, they are here to stay. Now, um, when I look at the hybrid cloud, like, you know, I'm only looking, I'm only talking from the IT point of view. Uh, if you look at Google Mail, like Gmail, that is some kind of a cloud that you are using. If your enterprise is using Gmail versus uh, Gmail plus something else. It could be some form of hybrid cloud, but we are only looking from enterprise uh, workloads point of view how we can leverage uh, the on-prem and the and the hybrid uh, and the public cloud to basically effectively uh, implement a better IT. Um, now, what is a hybrid cloud? So, from a simple definition point of view, the hybrid cloud is you know combination or uh, loosely coupled two or more hybrid uh, two, two or more clouds that acts as one cloud, right? And typically when people say hybrid cloud, it is like you have something on-prem. Uh, it could be VMware cloud or the OpenStack cloud. And then you combine that with, uh, you know, one or two um, public clouds. Essentially, the idea is to leverage the capabilities that various clouds offers to implement a better IT for yourself. So obviously, if um, hybrid cloud is done right, it definitely enhances the reliability of our IT, um, the flexibility of the IT, but more importantly, it can uh, uh, decrease the cost, like uh, cost of ownership can be, uh, can, can be enhanced by adapting a hybrid cloud strategy. Now, so, you know, the other research says, like, you know, total cost of ownership will be reduced by 54%. That's a big number. Um, obviously, you know, when you look at, like, the hybrid cloud and you look at the public cloud composition, the thing that we are looking at is the utility cloud model, right? And most of the time, we don't need dedicated resources for the tasks that we are running in our IT. If somehow we can leverage the utility model that the public cloud offers, and then only pay as we go, so it definitely reduces the cost of ownership, right? And also it enhances the operational efficiency because you spin up the resources and spin down the resources when you don't need them. Um, and, and the rest of them will follow. It facilitates the innovation, meet, meet customer expectations more readily, right? Obviously, there are um, very good benefits of, of uh, employing or uh, adapting hybrid cloud strategy. But um, what does hybrid cloud strategy really means, right? 
Um, if you talk to 10 different people, you, get, you may get 10 different answers. And depending on what the, sto what the vendor that you are talking to, he may, ha he may spin his own version of what the hybrid cloud is. But um, so from the, from the you know, I, if, if I look at um, what kind of deployments of hybrid cloud are there, I can boil down them into two categories. One is you have the unified management, right? So that means you take one or two uh, clouds, it could be on-prem and then the public cloud, and then you layer a unified management uh, 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 you know, layer on top of this cloud so that it can provide you a single pane of glass, right, for your management. Um, and it, it, it helps all the details of your individual clouds within the hybrid cloud, and then if you are spinning up some workload, based on what is needed from the workload, and then analyze what, what the capabilities that each of these clouds offers, it can det determine what the, what, the best, what the cloud that best suits your workload and, and deploy the workload there. And also, they, they help you provide some governance around like who is deploying what in your organization. So you know, this, is, this is one of the very popular way of deploying uh, hybrid cloud, right? Um, Scalar is, is, is the product that seems to be very popular open source project, but there are other projects out there that can help you, you know, implement this unified um, management for your hybrid cloud. Um, so so th that, that's all good things, but what are the disadvantages with this one, right? So it's still like, you know, you have a unified management and uh, you, can, you, can, you can basically deploy these workloads, either cloud one or cloud two, but then, you need to plan a complete life cycle of your applications. It's not like you basically identify the cloud and then deploy the application, but what about the rest of it, right? So here you're, you're essentially building silos, right? You may have three or four um, clouds within your hybrid cloud. So you choose one cloud for one workload, one, one cloud for other workload, and then, and then what? Like, you know, you are, you are basically stuck there. Like, you, if you choose a cloud one and then you deploy one application, you, you are, your application persists there. And there is not much synergy that's happening between the clouds, right? So it, once you deploy your application and then you want to leverage the capabilities that are available on a different cloud, right? But it may not hacks, uh, hacks access to the data, application data, so that like you can, uh, you can leverage uh, the synergies between the clouds. Um, so this is one, one popular, popular deployment model for the hybrid cloud. So the next one is um, the replicate data sets. So you have your on-prem applications, and then you have a storage. Um, and then the storage can replicate the data sets, whether it's LANs or files, um, back into the public cloud, right? Um, so you have application data sets available in the public cloud in case you want them. Uh, right, um, this provides some kind of um, security and then you know maybe availability of your data sets. But it, this one also comes with um, um, certain disadvantages. Um, for example, if uh, if you are replicating block storage, so essentially each block is replicated to the public public uh, cloud. Now, how do you how do you lay out your application knowledge on this set of lands, right? So. We don't know if those are like those lands are used by two VMs or ten VMs, um, and then we don't even know like whether those lands are formatted with a certain file system or certain uh, applications right side on the LAN. So unless you have, you know, how how those lands are used on your um, on your on your on-prem, you you can't make sense of like what is being uh, copied onto the um, onto the public cloud, right? So now, you know, if you look at public cloud and private cloud, there are a lot of, you know, people did a lot of research on what makes sense and what, make, what doesn't make sense. But overall, I think, you know, your hybrid cloud uh, implementation should have a way to utilize the utility model that um, public cloud offers, right? Abundant supply of compute and storage resources, right? You can, you, should, you spin up the resources as you want and then spin down the resources when you are done with this. So your hybrid crowd strategy is not utilizing the utility model that the public cloud offer. You know, you, you are, your hybrid cloud, uh, you are limited by what you can do, what you, what you can achieve out of the hybrid cloud, right? Now, so the, the two hybrid models that I talked about, one is unified um, management layer and the other one is like some kind of gateway so where you can replicate your data sets into the public cloud. Those are well and good, but they almost looks like a greenfield opportunities, right? So if you are 
if you are starting from clean slate and you are, you are um, building an IT from, from ground up, well, these two models make perfect sense. But what about the existing IT, right? It's not like um, IT, you can, it's been there for years, and then you have a lot of um, applications that are already running on uh, enterprise IT. How do you leverage um, the, how do you basically deploy hybrid cloud strategy for your enterprises, right? So this is something that we'll explore um, in the next few slides. Now, when you, when you look at the enterprises, right, we do a lot of things in, in, in IT on a daily basis. Um, one is the functional requirements, right? Essentially, these are the critical business critical processes that need to be up and running all the time. If anyone goes down, that's not good for the business. So it could be your um, HR, payroll, or CRM system, email server. So all these are business, um, uh, business intelligence or analytical systems that, that are up and running all the time. Um, and then the next one is non-functional requirement that typically the IT users don't see them, but you still need to execute those things all the time, right? For example, you, know, you need to make sure that your applications are performing at the peak scale so that the, all the SLAs are met. And um, you need to implement some kind of BCDR, right? Um, and then you need to ensure that the data, is, da data security is preserved and the network security is preserved. And uh, when you are deploying or when you are doing the tech refresh, you need to make sure that you, know, that you are testing your application. So there are a lot of things that goes behind the scenes. Those are non-functional requirements, right? Now, let's look at like, what resources are needed for the functional requirements or some non-functional requirements, and then see how we can map it to the hybrid cloud implementation, right? So when you look at the non-functional requirements, obviously these are dedicated resources, right? You, you got to have those applications up and running 24-7, and uh, you probably need the best of the breed uh, hardware resources available for running those things, right? These are business critical applications, right? So these, these are pretty much you know, belongs to the on-prem if you, if you are basically going with the hybrid cloud approach. But then, when you look at non-functional requirements, these are, these are not like, is not a critical path of the business, but you still need to have those things um, to have the IT. Those are important for the IT, right? And, um, and some of them are like, you know, network scanners. Maybe you, you need to run some vir virus scanners or, or the network security uh, applications to make sure that you, you, ha you have the right security in place, right? Or you, it may be test dev, right? And for these things, you don't need dedicated resources, right? And this is the, 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 these, for, for these kind of um, um, requirements, you can definitely leverage the public cloud uh, so that you can basically spin up the resource as you need it and then spin down. So you can use that utility model uh, to make your uh, IT more agile, but also most cost effective. Right. So, how do we how do we basically develop these things and then move some of the functionality that you perform on prem in the in the, in the IT to the public cloud? So, one of the binding thing one of the one of the thing that we needed is uh, obviously access to the same data set um, between these two uh, requirements, both functional and non functional requirement. So, um, unless unless so, for example, if you are if you are moving the the, the BCDR or test dev to the public cloud. So you need to have the right data set from, from the production application so that your test dev um, is, is, um, uh, is, is effective. So what that means is they need to, ha they need to have access to the same data set that um, your production is running so that your test and dev can be more effective. So you need to, you need to have this layer where this data access flows between on-prem and all the clouds within the hybrid cloud, right? So I call out like, these are the four, how do you achieve that one? So I called out like, I called out four key enablers for the hybrid cloud. So one of them is the platform agnostic, right? Um, so we, we deploy lots of applications um, in our, in our uh, IT, but, the, but we don't capture these data sets in a way that is consumed across all the clouds, right? So if you are deploying a hybrid cloud, if you can't consume your data sets that you are, that you are deploying on one cloud on a different cloud, that limits uh, you know, what you can do with the hybrid cloud, right? The other one is ability to mobile uh, your data sets between the clouds. So once you, know, you, you have cl on cloud one, you have the application, but you should be able to analyze and uh, 
um, you know, run some, uh, uh, run some uh, 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 applications on the same data set on a, on a public, on a different cloud. So you should be able to securely uh, move these data sets between the clouds. The third one, orchestrate. So let's say you have an application that is running on-prem and you capture the data sets in a, in a platform independent way. Now you can access that data between these two, two or three clouds. But then at some point, you need to go and realize the data set on a different cloud, right? You, you, you need to reorchestrate that application on a different set so that you uh, to basically uh, get, the, get the most value out of your data set. And the fourth one is, is the single pane of glass. Um, so you know, whether, whether you are building your hybrid cloud with one, uh, one cloud or multiple clouds, you should not expose a lot of complexity to the end user, right? If you have... Um, so, so that is the, 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 the single pane of administration uh, between the clouds is, is under. So these are the uh, key enablers, I would say, is important for the, for the, for the effective implementation of the hybrid cloud. Okay. So uh, let's, let's dig down deep into each one of these attributes. Um, one is the platform agnostic. Um, so it's very, very important that any data we capture in one cloud uh, should be able to consume in a different cloud, right? Um, but, but you know, getting some, getting a platform agnostic way or platform ind independent way of capturing the data is not that trivial because uh, the current IT uses lots of um, uh, different platforms, so each capture looks a lot more different, right? So, um, and also, you know, uh, when you when you look at how we basically build the uh, IT over the period of time. There is not much uh, separation between the application and then the platform, right? So we load uh, our application server with a lot of filters and the agents uh, to realize the non-functional requirements, right? So it basically bloats our IT and then uh, also makes our IT a lot more complex. So that is one of the reasons why it's very, very difficult to yank our applications in a platform independent way so that those applications can be mobile between the, between the clouds, right? So one of the, one of the basic things that we need to do to leverage the hybrid cloud is standardize on a platform like obviously OpenStack, right? Uh, so that at least, at least we can, ca at, at, the on-prem can be, can run in a standard platform and all the applications that are running on this can be can be platform independent and 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 and, and provide the mobility between the clouds, right? Um, and also, you need to have access to the um, access to the same data between the clouds. So that means you need to capture your applications uh, in in its entirety and also capture them um, more often, right? So, so that uh, so that all this all this data can be analyzed or used standard tools, maybe Linux tools or some standard uh, off-the-shelf tools um, to implement the non-function to implement that uh, various functionalities in various clouds by leveraging the underlying capabilities of the cloud. Now, the next one is the workload mobility, right? Um, so, according to according to Cisco study. Um, 64% of the respondents say like you, they need to have an automated way of uh, m of moving the workloads between the clouds, right? Um, so the second factor, the workload mobility is also important. So we talked about platform independency, and then now we are talking about the um, workload mobility. So how do we achieve the workload mobility? How do you basically uh, move the data between the clouds, right? Um, so we, we, traditional storage like NFS, they cannot scale uh, between the clouds. So the best way to um, you know, move, the, move the workloads between the clouds is the cloud storage, right? For, uh, the, for example, S3 is, 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 is the most popular. And then other cloud storage um, can also be used uh, to, to, to basically persist uh, the, the application data, but also able to access um, between the clouds within the hybrid cloud, right? So, And the third one, why am I doing this? Oh. Yeah, third, third enabler is the orchestrate, right? So if you, if, if, if you have some application that is built in one cloud and you already captured that in a platform independent way and you have a means to migrate the data to a different cloud, the third step is are you able to reorchestrate that same application on a public cloud, on, on, a, on a different cloud? 
So um, I'm taking this typical uh, uh, application here. So it's like three VM deployment. Um, it has various uh, storage attached to that one, and then we have two or three networks um, uh, connected to the uh, connect to the VMs. Um, when if you if you and assuming that this is running on an open stack, right? And uh, how do we how, how do we reorchestrate the same application in Amazon? Um, fortunately, between Amazon and OpenStack, the mapping of the resource types that are available between the, between the two clouds, they match very well. Um, so it's, it's a pretty straightforward to take what, whatever is captured on OpenStack. For example, if all the, all the VM images and the sender images are captured in a, in a standard format like uq 2 they can be converted into AMI image, and, and rest of them can be mapped from OpenStack um, resource types to the AWS resource type and, and then re, uh, recreate that application relatively easily. Okay. And the third one is, uh, you know, obviously you, you need to have one uh, administrative domain for managing all the, um, all the clouds within your hybrid cloud. So if you have one tenant in your hybrid cloud, right, and you log into your hybrid cloud, you should not feel that you need to log into all four different clouds. Right, and uh, this may, this uh, one one uh, the single pane of glass should hide all the details and provide you one um, a simple interface for you to consume all the all the um, uh, hybrid clouds. So, you know, we talked about so we talked about key, four key enablers, right? Um, it's a platform independent way of capturing the data and then able to, to migrate the data between the clouds. And the third one is able to, to reorchestrate. Any of the any of this application set in any of the uh, any of the clouds of the hybrid cloud, and then the fourth one we talked about is the single pane of glass. So assuming that um, you know you got you got what uh, what I was trying to tell you correctly. So one trivia for you: What is the most important cloud in your hybrid cloud? Can anyone take that? So if you can get the hybrid cloud strategy right, my answer is none because. At the end of the day, your business application is the most critical. If you capture the data in a way that is uh, platform independent, um, you know, where you are running your application is completely irrelevant. You should be able to leverage any cloud that is there part of your hybrid cloud. So that is the journey that we need to achieve to so that, so that hybrid, our hybrid cloud strategy can be more effective. Now, let's uh, take a look at like, what we do on a daily basis. Um, Trillio data, um, we battle multiple clouds, even though multiple OpenStack clouds. Um, to, to just give a, a quick blip of like what, uh, what we do, we offer um, back data protection as a service for, that, uh, for the OpenStack clouds. So just like any other service within the OpenStack, right, ours is an add-on service to your cloud, and we provide tenant-level backups. Um, and so what we do is we don't just capture your sender volume are the files, we capture your entire application. So if you are running a multi-VM, uh, multi-sender volume application, we capture the entire application environment in, in one, uh, as a one snapshot, and, um, and we persist across uh, multiple um, uh, stories, stories like NFS or Swift or Ceph or, in the future, Amazon Web Services. So the reason why I'm saying is, like, that makes our uh, support matrix a lot more complex, right? Um, you know, we need to we need to test with um, uh, different sets of uh, uh, the OpenStack distributions and different release of OpenStack distributions, and then different uh, target repository that we need to do. So most of the time, these are the common questions that the customer get to ask, right? Um, if you are deploying OpenStack, you don't really limit yourself to one OpenStack, right? You may be deploying OpenStack on Liberty that's running on production. Now you are planning to uh, upgrade that to the Newton, right? So it's not like one fine day you go and uh, upgrade your Liberty Neutron. That's not, uh, Newton. That's not it's going to work, right? Most of the time you stand up a different cloud, right, that is running the Newton. And then it goes through uh, some testing. And then you want to take the workload that is running in the production and then recreate that on Newton and, and test the production, make sure that they are working up to the, up to the, up to the mark before you fail over to the new, um, uh, new release. So 
so th this is this is the common theme we see with our customers. So these are the questions that comes because of that, right? So it, it, they have multiple clouds deployed. How do they migrate the workload from one one cloud to a different cloud, right? Or they set up two clouds and they want to use it one cloud a DR site for the other cloud. So how do they make sure that the workloads can be reorchestrated? So we you know uh, because because the way we capture the workloads in entirety. Um, we can orchestrate these cloud, these these workloads between 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 different versions of the OpenStack cloud. So our support matrix becomes very very complex. And not only that, for every time we release release, we need to um, we need to test the migration scenarios uh, between be, between any two any any two uh, versions of the cloud. So. Um, it's it's quite common that we take a backup that was done in Kilo, and then we should be able to restore to the Newton. So even though these are all um, same clouds, even though they are they basically have the same API set, but it is it is still um, it, it is still a challenge uh, take, taking taking the complete workload in one um, one one cloud and then restore it and make sure. That workload is uh, working all right because your resource type may be changed, right? So the the kilo version of the OpenStack that you are running may be running on LVM, and then the Newton may be running on Ceph, or maybe the net network configuration has changed, or maybe the regions has changed. So there are a lot of things that can go on, a lot of things that can change between two clouds. Um, so um, whatever backups that are done on the kilo, they should be able to run on Newton. So we 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 do constantly ch test. Test, test the migration scenario between various clouds. This is this can be only achieved basically. We adhere to that four principles. Um, try to be platform agnostic. So all our back all the backups that we do need to be platform agnostic. So we should be able to take that and arc, take take that and um, recreate that on any other open stack. Um, and we we have we should have a common way to mobile mo, you know migrate these work data sets between the clouds. Um, either through NFS or through Swift or, or, um, or the Ceph, and, and then re-orchestrate. So you need to recreate the entire workload that was backed up onto your, onto your destination cloud. So the, even though it's not the true private to public hybrid cloud scenario, but it is still nonetheless it's a multi-cloud management. Um, it uh, it basically it, it takes the cha same challenges as implementing a complete hybrid cloud. Okay, so in summary, we uh, quickly went through like what the hybrid cloud um, is and what uh, what the popular deployments models of the hybrid cloud are. Um, you know the challenges in the enterprise. I think it, uh, to make it uh, enterprise is more agile. Um, so we need to capture everything in a platform agnostic way. We need to be able to migrate the data sets between the public cloud and private cloud. Um, we need, we should be able to reorchestrate this application. So these are the things we talked about it to make it um, um, IT is more agile and leverage the hybrid cloud. Uh, all the good things about the hybrid cloud. Um, so that's pretty much it. Like any questions? Made sense? Okay. So um, we, we'll be doing a good uh, quick demo tomorrow in the uh, theater, uh, essentially demonstrating how we capture the workloads in one cloud and migrate to the different cloud. Uh, please uh, welcome, uh, please, uh, we invite you to join there. Okay. Thank you.